Hi, I'm Professor Andrew Ray Peña from the Philippine Normal University. Have you ever wondered why we say crime, but not criminal? Instead, we say criminal. Why do we say divine, but we don't say divinity? Instead, we say divinity. Why do we say sign, but not signal? Instead, we say signal. Well, today I will try to share with you some of the struggles that led to the development of the modern English language. The story of English starts in the 5th century AD, with the traditional date being 449 AD, when the Anglo-Saxon peoples migrated across the North Sea to Britain taking with them their language and culture. Another people group migrated with them, the Jutes, but settled only in limited areas of what is now Britain. The Saxons came from the portion of land which is now northern Germany. The Jutes came from a region, now mostly is Denmark. Between the Jutes and Saxons was the land from which the Angles came from. Before that, there were different people who lived in England. These included the Celtic Britons. They were closely related to the Celts in other parts of Europe. The Celtic Britons were the people in Britain when the Romans colonized it. They did not speak English or even Old English. While many of their Celtic relatives in mainland Europe were killed by the Romans, the Celts in England were safe, as long as the Romans stayed there. But after the Romans left Britain, the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes sailed to Britain and established their own communities there, displacing the Britons. As I said before, the English that we know of today came from the Anglo-Saxon peoples, who migrated to Britain in the 5th century. The language of the Anglo-Saxons came to be known as Old English. It was a Germanic language, meaning it came from the same ancestral language as other languages spoken in Germany and Northern Europe. Old English sounded very much like German and other languages in Northern Europe. Old English was originally written using runes. Runes were the letters of the Old English alphabet. You probably would not be surprised to know that runes were also used throughout many parts of Germany and Scandinavia. What survives up to the present day are what are called rune stones. Rune stones are big pieces of rock written with rune letters. These rocks were usually memorial stones. They were erected as brightly colored, but the colors faded after time. Runic inscriptions in other places were not magical, but expressed simple, everyday messages. Later on, as missionaries from Ireland came to England in the 600s, the runic script was replaced by Latin script. This change in Britain also happened in much of Europe, the Latin script replacing runes and other local alphabet systems. As runes became scarce and became old artifacts, that was, the likely, that was likely the time that they became shrouded in mystery and considered to be magical. Even after the Latin script became widely used, there were some runic letters that were retained and used along with the Latin script. Among them are the following. This letter is called an ash. It is pronounced like the A ah in cat. This letter is called a thorn. It can either be the soft th or the hard th, depending on the sounds it goes with. This letter is called an eth. Just like the thorn, it can either be the soft th or the hard th, depending on the sounds it goes with. 
We will not discuss the rules that govern when a thorn or ez are pronounced as hard or soft pH. This letter is called a yong. It can be pronounced as g or g, or even as a y. Old English had so many more irregular plurals than modern English. For example, the plural of goat was gat. The plural for peanut was peanite. The plural for book was beak. The plural for lamb was lambrew. Many eggs were called eggrew. And the plural for bread was breadrew. There were words that had the same form for both the singular and plural. For example, the plural for sheep was sheep, and the plural for house was also a house. But house was pronounced as hus at that time. There were words that had n for plural. Examples are ayin for eyes, tungin for tongues, and namen for names. Well, there were also words that were pluralized by adding S, including days. But in many cases, you just had to memorize the plurals for the words in Old English. But that was Old English before the Vikings came. Two centuries after the Anglo-Saxons established themselves in Britain, another wave of invasion after invasion came. This time, it came from Vikings who slowly penetrated into Britain over the years. One of the most significant events during this period was in 865 AD, when a huge army of Vikings invaded Britain and eventually controlled much of northern and eastern England. These Vikings, coming from Scandinavia, spoke a language called Old Norse. So. There were now two groups of people speaking two different but closely related languages, both of which were Germanic. The two groups intermarried and Old English came to borrow words from Old Norse. Words borrowed from Old Norse into English included the following. Husband, skin, birth, R. Call, happy, though, they, and there. The Vikings who tried to speak Old English also had lots of trouble memorizing the plurals of different words. To make it easier for them, they just added S to the ends of words to make them plural. However, there were words that stuck to the original format including children, oxen, sheep, and teeth. English at this time was considered a low language. There were only a few pieces of literature written in English. King Alfred, King of England in the 9th century, even made a plea for more literature to be written in English and for many great works to be translated into English. He lamented the fact that there were only a few people who were willing or capable of doing so. Latin at this time was still the dominant language for academic discourse. Let me also share with you John 3.16 in Old English around the 10th century. God Lufo de Midianer soa set he sell de his ansenedan sunu zet nanne forwurse se on hine gelife ach hebe set eche lif. That was John three sixteen in Old English, 10th century. It would probably surprise and amuse you that double negatives were considered grammatical in Old English. And so were double comparatives like more gladder 
and more lower. Double superlatives were also considered grammatical, such as most royalist and most shamefulest. Did you know, by the way, that apple used to be called napple? So English speakers at that time said an apple instead of an apple. They also said a napron instead of an apron. A very significant event in the struggle for English happened in 1066. In this year, William of Normandy successfully crossed the English Channel and invaded Britain. His army was victorious and killed King Harold, the last king of the Anglo-Saxons, at the Battle of Hastings. The arrival of the Normans, who were of Viking origins but spoke French and were culturally French, produced many changes in Britain. There were many changes indeed. Socially, the French of the Normans became the language of high society. English was the language of the ordinary, uneducated people. Linguistically, it was because of the influence of the Normans that modern English became very different from Old English, with Middle English being like a transition between them. Middle English was spoken for around 300 years from around the middle of the 12th century to the middle of the 15th century. For instance, Old English had case markings to show who was the doer of the action, who was the receiver of the action, who owns an object, where the object came from, and where the object was going to. This means that even if you change the order of the words, the sentence will mean the same thing. Let me first illustrate this with an example from Latin. The word wolf in Latin is lupus, if it is the doer of an action. If it was the receiver of an action, then the Latin word for wolf is lupum. This means that even if you change the arrangement of phrases, the sentence would have the same meaning. So, the following sentences mean the same thing. Andrew saw Lupum, Lupum saw Andrew. They both mean Andrew saw the wolf, even if the ordering of the words are different. In Old English, if something is the receiver of the action, you had to mark it with the word thone, and the word order can be changed. So the following sentences mean the same thing, even if the word order is different. Note that the word kinning was the Old English word for king. Andrew saw Thone kinning. Thone kinning saw Andrew. These two sentences both mean Andrew saw the king. The case markings of Old English disappeared. That is why in modern English, speakers and listeners had to rely on the order of the words. And so, the king saw Andrew is different from Andrew saw the king. Another important influence of the Normans was the addition of many French words into English. Among these are words of government, aristocracy, and high society. Examples are government, crown, virgin, parliament, money, prince, court, mercy, attorney, and a greater than thousand more. Pronunciation of English words also changed. For example, what was originally pronounced as quine became pronounced as queen. The old way of pronouncing English words was replaced by French pronunciation, particularly if one wanted to be considered educated, sophisticated, and respectable. In translating the Bible, many people believe that there simply were not enough words in English that could properly express the meaning of the original Greek and Latin texts. 
So, English speakers borrowed so many words from other languages, including French, Latin, and Greek. The 12th to 15th centuries brought many changes to English. This was the period of transition from Old English to Modern English. Please note that Shakespeare's English is also considered Modern English by this reckoning. There were changes to pronunciation. The Old English word moose became pronounced as mouse. The word whose became pronounced as house, along with similar changes in other words. In Old English, both the words crime and criminal were pronounced in the same way. That is, as cream and criminal. The same thing was in the case of the words seen and signal. But then, from somewhere between 1150 and 1450, there came what is called the Middle English Vowel Shortening. Criminal became criminal and signal became signal. But cream and scene remained the same. Then came the Great Vowel Shift. The E in cream and scene became crime and sign, but the words criminal and signal remained the same. This is why we have the word pairs. This is why we have the word pairs, divine and divinity, profound and profundity, sane and sanity. Have you also wondered why we have horn, but we have unicorn? It used to be that the word horn was corn. That is why an animal with only one horn was called unicorn. But then the word corn changed into horn. But that change did not affect unicorn. And that's why even though we have horn, we still have unicorn. Then there were changes in meaning. The first was broadening from more limited narrow meaning to more coverage. For example, the word dog used to refer to only one breed of dog. Now it means all kinds of dogs. The word holiday used to refer only to holy days. Now they include all kinds of special days, even if they are not considered holy. Then, as you now know, the word quarantine referred to only 40 days of isolation. Now it means isolation of any length of time. Actually, even now, we also have broadening. For example, virus and mouse no longer refer to just biological entities, but to other kinds as well. The words cookie, library, and text used to have limited, narrow meanings. Now they refer to more items. Now, if there's broadening, there's also narrowing. For example, the word meat used to refer to all kinds of food, but now it only refers to animal flesh eaten as food. Interestingly, the word deer used to refer to all kinds of beasts. Now it refers only to those with horns, have long legs, and are herbivores. The word hound used to refer to all kinds of dogs. Now it refers only to dogs used for hunting.
There were other meaning shifts as well. For example, the word night used to mean youth, lust referred only to libido, lewd meant ordinary, unlearned people, immoral meant not customary. Charity, instead of caring for the poor, referred to the highest form of love. Silly meant happy, nice meant ignorant, and fond meant foolish. Let me now share with you John 16 written in Middle English. This comes from the Wycliffe Bible published around 1382 to 1395. For God loved so the world that he gave his one begotten Son, that each man that believeth in him perish not, but have everlasting life. That was John 3.16 from the Wycliffe Bible in Middle English. What does this all mean for us Filipinos and peoples who were colonized? Well, for one, we don't need to worry too much that we borrowed a lot of words from Western countries knowing that those countries also borrowed words from more intellectual languages. In fact, English borrowed 99% of all the words in its dictionaries from Latin, French, and Greek, and other languages. Second, we don't need to worry too much about language change. Language change does not mean corruption. Just as human beings change, language also change. What we need to do is to rejoice in the beauty and variety of our language. Thank you very much.